Hi, my name is Barbara Harrison, co-founder of Golden, the Genetics, Opportunities, Learning, Development, and Empowerment Network. Golden was created to encourage more African Americans to become genetic counselors by increasing awareness, recruiting, and providing mentorship. By reaching out to historically Black universities and colleges through lectures and participating in other career events, as well as focused social media marketing, we are spreading the word about genetic counseling as a career field. It is very important for us as African Americans to be represented so that our voices can be heard and the concerns of our community can be addressed as we move into the era of personalized health. Today, I am excited to be joined by seven successful genetic counselors who work in different areas of practice. Over the next hour, you will learn more about what genetic counselors do, the importance of our work, and how to successfully become a genetic counselor. I trained at the University of Pittsburgh and have been a genetic counselor for over 20 years. Currently, I primarily see prenatal patients and on a daily basis, I not only see those patients, but I teach medical students and residents, and I do community outreach work in sickle cell. I have the pleasure of serving mostly African-American clients, although about a third of my patients are immigrants from Central America and primarily speak Spanish. I find it very fulfilling to work with these communities since they are often minimalized, minimized or ignored in our healthcare system. And with that, I will turn it over to my colleague and co-founder of Gold, Golden, Grace. Thank you, Barb. So like Barb just mentioned, I'm the co-founder of Golden and my name is Grace Fassay. In addition to increasing awareness about genetic counseling among students, Golden is committed to providing mentoring to aspiring genetic counselors. Once a student is interested in genetic counseling and their interest is sparked and they're excited, the hope is that that fire and drive will be enough for them to get into the field. But to be completely honest, it's quite a challenge. It's very competitive to get into a genetic counseling program. That's why Golden is here to support and mentor aspiring genetic counselors into the field by sharing our knowledge about what it takes to become a successful graduate school applicant, a genetic counseling student, and eventually thrive in the field. So I'm gonna tell you a little bit about myself before I turn it over to the panelists. I graduated from the joint Johns Hopkins University National Institutes of Health Genetic Counseling Training Program in 2000. Throughout my career, I've worked as a research genetic counselor, mainly with cancer patients. Currently, all of the patients that I see are enrolled on a research study. So in a research setting, there are certain days where I try to carve out and spend my time with my patients, make those clinical days. And then on other days, I try to carve out and focus on my research responsibilities. My research responsibilities include training clinical genetics teams and includes designing the genetics components of a study. It involves implementing the study, helping to implement it. So as a genetic counselor, that mainly involves taking care of patients and families. And then I'm also involved in disseminating or sharing the knowledge with the community. And that's mainly done through helping to prepare articles for publications, and preparing presentations. The Golden Program is near and dear to my heart. And that's because I think if we increase the number of Black genetic counselors, then we'll increase the diversity of thought that's necessary to make sure that genetic services are equally available to all patients. So next up, we're gonna have Elise Travis. She's an aspiring genetic counselor She's gonna be our moderator and she's gonna share what she's learned about what it takes to become a genetic counselor and what it takes to apply, the process of applying to a genetic counseling graduate program. Thank you. 
Hi everyone, and thank you Grace and Barb for that introduction. My name is Elise Travis, and I am a prospective genetic counseling student and current graduate student at Case Western Reserve University in the Department of Bioethics. Through my seasons of applying for genetic counseling programs, I have learned that the admission requirements include, but are not limited to, requirements for admission into the graduate school of the genetic counseling program, genetic counseling program requirements, and finally, recommended experience, which can include volunteering within the GC community, GC shadowing, or crisis counseling. Now, I would like to turn it over to meet the incredible other genetic counselors on this panel. Hi, my name is Matt Thomas. I'm a genetic counselor at the University of Virginia. Um, I graduated from the Johns Hopkins University and National Institutes of Health uh, genetic counseling training program. Uh, I started the cardiovascular genetics program here at the University of Virginia seven years ago, and I specialize in seeing people who have inherited heart conditions. An average day for me varies quite a bit. I primarily work in clinic and see patients of all ages who have or are at risk for inherited heart diseases. So some days I'm sitting in clinic next to cardiologists, cardiology nurses, and other members of the cardiology team seeing patients who have been recently diagnosed or have been battling with their heart disease for a very long time. Those patients are looking for answers as to why they develop their condition, and sometimes genetic testing can help find those answers. They often want to know, well, is there anything that I can do to help my heart disease? And our cardiology team uh, works on doing that through medication, through certain surgical procedures, and certain lifestyle modifications. So patients will ask, well, if I change my diet or if I do certain exercises, might I reduce my risk for heart disease? And in general, that's true for almost any of us. Um, with inherited heart disease, it's a little bit different. And the challenge is, is for those patients, they have a specific gene that's causing their disease to develop. Um, sometimes that's not even related at all to what they eat or how they exercise. However, there are certain things you can do to help improve people's lifespan and longevity. Uh, and so there's a delicate and, and, and balance between exercising safely, not too hard necessarily if you're at risk for a heart rhythm problem, but also not being a couch potato. Uh, and so we work as a, as a team to try to make sure those patients get guidance on those activities that are best for them. Um, I also work with individuals who have a family history of heart disease. Um, the most impactful experience I have are working with parents um, or, or, or family members who have lost a loved one to sudden cardiac death. Unfortunately, untreated cardiovascular diseases that are inherited can predispose to people passing away suddenly. And so as a member of the team, I try to figure out if an event like this has happened, why did it happen? Um, is there a genetic cause we can find through doing DNA analysis? Can we do cardiology testing in the surviving family? And might we be able to give them some, some closure or some explanation for exactly what happened and what we can do to protect the survivors? Um, I would say uh, the other aspects of my typical day, I do get the opportunity to teach our medical school and teach the future generation of physicians and nurses uh, in our nursing school. I get the opportunity to supervise genetic counseling students, which is greatly rewarding, and the opportunity to be involved with diversity, equity, inclusion uh, initiatives and within my own department and, and university. Diversity is critically important in cardiovascular genetics. A recent publication from just a few years ago found that when we interpret genetic test results from those of underrepresented minority groups who haven't been studied as well as traditionally European, uh, Western European populations, we, we can and often have misinterpreted test results and miscalled a genetic test report because we didn't know what was considered normal with a, with a particular patient of an ancestry that wasn't studied enough. And fortunately, databases of patients of underrepresented minority groups have improved over the years after these sort of findings were released. And so the more diversity in our research and, and recruitment of patients and participants will be critical. I really appreciate being able to participate in this forum. So my name is Tiffany Lewis. And I graduated from the Sarah Lawrence College Genetic Counseling Program in 2004. I currently work as an oncology genetic counselor, and I've done that now for about 15 years. My typical day 
is kind of a hybrid, if you will. I do see patients, um, mostly patients who are referred because they either have a cancer diagnosis themselves and they are concerned about the um, inherited basis of the disease and whether or not genetic testing could impact their medical management. We also see patients who are referred because they have a very strong family history of cancer and they themselves are wondering how they might be screened differently if they have an inherited um, genetic um, mutation. I also work with students as part of multiple different genetic counseling programs across the country. Um, some of those students come to see me or work with me weekly. Some of them spend an entire summer um, with me. I also train other allied health professionals to identify patients at risk for hereditary cancers. So that may be um, physician assistants, nurse practitioners, um, physicians, nurses, I'm very passionate about making sure that everyone understands the role of a genetic counselor, the value that we bring to the healthcare team. And so any opportunity that I have to educate others, I certainly take advantage of that. Then I spend some time in the community. Any opportunity to share with um, patients or just the lay community about the importance of genetic counseling and testing, especially as it applies to oncology, I take advantage of that. Um, when I think about diversity in the field of genetics, but more specifically oncology, um, it's very, very important to me to make sure that patients who look like me and from backgrounds like mine have access, equal access to the services that we are able to provide. If we think about breast cancer, we know that it affects Caucasian women more frequently than African-American women, but African-American women tend to die um, more often of the disease. There are probably a number of different reasons why that occurs, but we know that individuals who have a hereditary cancer syndrome can often be screened earlier. Um, they can choose different uh, medical management decisions that hopefully can improve outcome. And more importantly, if we've identified a hereditary cancer syndrome in the family, then we can make sure that all other at-risk relatives are screened at the appropriate time. So they are not constantly having to fight for um, screening that is typically recommended, like a mammogram, for example, even prostate cancer screening that has become controversial. And we know that African-American men tend to have prostate cancer more frequently. So if we're able to identify those men and make sure there were advocates for them, helping them to get screening, um, educating the other men in their family, oftentimes that may change the outcome. So I am happy to be here today. I'm glad to share what it is that I do as a genetic counselor and look forward to interacting with the other panels. Hi everyone, um, my name is Tanel Luck and I am a 2009 graduate of the Howard University Genetic Counseling Program. I currently work in the laboratory setting, um, but not as a genetic counselor, believe it or not. So my knowledge as a cancer genetic counselor prior to moving over to the lab really helped me in this role as a sales representative or account executive. So I am the one who works with various medical oncologists, surgeons, gynecological oncologists, genetic counselors, as well as nurses to help educate them on the importance of ordering cancer genetic testing for their patients. So my typical day uh, varies. There are some days that I'm out in the field uh, and interacting with these various professionals to uh, help them know how to order the testing correctly, how to identify which patients are appropriate for genetic counseling, and then ultimately how to discuss why these results are important for them and how it will aid and treatment decisions for their patients. And in, on days that I'm not in the field and doing this education for providers, I am working remotely from home and doing a lot of administrative duties. That <laughs> includes helping offices troubleshoot, answering common questions that they may have about testing that patients may have about insurance coverage and if the testing is going to be approved by their insurances. Also just helping them be able to answer common questions that patients may have in regards to their results, what this could mean for them. And ultimately, like I said, how it's going to benefit their treatment and 
how the genetic testing results will also impact their family members as well, because we know that if a patient comes back positive for one of these hereditary cancer genes, there is a 50% chance that their family members could also have it. So my typical day changes, but I love the role that I'm in. And I think that my experience as a cancer genetic counselor for six years prior to going over into the laboratory setting really kind of helps me provide education for providers that most sales representatives do not have. I think diversity and inclusion is so important in our field because let's face it, representation matters. And when you see someone else who looks like you, it kind of like gives you the know that this is possible. And you also feel like you're not the only one that is doing this. So I also think that um, as far as trying to expand genetics and be more innovative when it comes to the testing that we offer. I think that diversity and inclusion is important there too, because like Matt and Tiffany both pointed out, um, there are different SNPs and things that we as African Americans have that our European um, ancestry colleagues don't or patients don't. And so in order to provide that personalized medicine for those African American patients, we do need that genetic information. So I'm a part or I'm glad to be a part of the laboratory setting where we're trying to be innovative in that sense and push that testing for patients of all ethnicities. So with that, I'll turn it over to the next genetic counselor. Hi, I'm Erica Price. I graduated from Arcadia University in 2019, and I work as a general pediatric counselor. So my typical day is a little bit of a mix. We see patients two to three times a week, and primarily for the concern of developmental delay. So our patients are not meeting their milestones on time. They may have things like short stature. They're not me meeting their growth parameters. They may have autism or a congenital heart defect, hearing concern, things like that. And I work with a geneticist. So together we see patients throughout the day, two to three days a week. And then I am also responsible with, for all of the communication on the back end. So talking to patients about how to navigate the health system in general, how to uh, make sure that they get the appropriate testing and all of those types of things. So uh, it is a challenging job in that you are responsible for making sure that our families don't fall through the cracks, making sure that they are constantly getting the appropriate care that they need. And so I also think that for me, that is one of the main reasons that I think that there needs to be more diversity in the field. I have witnessed firsthand the number of minority patients that come into our clinic that feel as though they're not being heard, that are not able to appropriately connect because they don't see a provider on the other side that looks like them parents that are afraid to ask questions because they are not able to find a provider that relates to them in a, in a way that is helpful, in a way that helps to, to care and give them the tools they need to be able to continue to navigate through the health system, which at times can be difficult for, for anyone. And so for me, one of the main reasons why I think that there needs to be more representation is because for our African-American patients, there just is a divide on some of the additional services that are provided or talked to from other, other providers that they've seen in the past. And I think it's helpful for providing a safe space so that our patients and our, the parents can ask questions that they need, they need to, to ask. The other days, so I said I, I see patients typically two to three days a week. The other days are typically admin days, and I also have a, a lysosomal storage disease clinic. So on some of my off days, I will see adult patients that have 
genetic conditions, mainly Gaucher disease, Fabry disease, and Pompe disease. And those are three different conditions that basically, if you go back to biology, the lysosome is the recycling center of the cell. And so they have a genetic predisposition or they have a genetic change that predisposes them to have an accumulation of a enzyme or a protein that shouldn't be accumulating. And so they can have various types of symptoms ranging from different neurological symptoms, heart conditions, things like that. And so we also work with those patients to provide them with the treatments that are available and to navigate their continued care, their, their chronic care through some of the other specialists that, that they need to see as well. So I am very excited <laughs> to be here. And so I will pass it on, I guess, to the next genetic counselor. Hi everyone, my name is Shayla Clark and I'm currently a prenatal genetic counselor. I graduated from Stanford University's genetic counseling training program in spring 2020. So I'm currently in my first year of working as a genetic counselor and I absolutely love it. So I work in a maternal fetal medicine clinic and basically what that is, is a clinic where the OBs are specialized in high risk obstetrics complications and high-risk pregnancies. So the patients I see are coming to us because their OB referred them because they might have a high-risk screening test for things like Down syndrome, or they have a family history of a genetic disorder, or they're just advanced maternal age, meaning they're 35 years or older um, at the time of delivery. So I see patients with all kinds of abnormal complications in their pregnancies and test results. So what a daily day looks like for me is I see about four patients a day, which comes out to 20 patients a week. And they might have an abnormal test result that I review with them, go over their, their testing options, what the indication is, what the life looks like for the condition that the test is high risk, say for something like Down syndrome. And then I kind of walk with them through the emotions of it all, the um, anxieties, the worries, the concerns, and try to get, empower them with information that can help them kind of navigate their um, decision-making going from there. I also call out um, genetic test results. So if I order any screening, like carrier screening, to see if there's any recessive diseases in the family, I'll call out those test results or test results for NIPT tests, which are tests that test for chromosome aneuploidies, um, go over those test results. Sometimes I talk to laboratory genetic counselors about results from amniocentesis or CDS procedures and talk to the doctors about what testing is best for their patients if they saw a patient that wasn't able to see me. So it's, it's a whole gamut of things. My patient population is very diverse. I see patients from all socioeconomic status, all ethnic groups, religious backgrounds, things like that. And so I really feel that diversity is extremely important in our field of genetic counseling because the patients that we serve are diverse. We're not always going to see patients with the same background of us or patients that look like us. And I think it's important for the workforce to be diverse so that everyone has a foundational knowledge and um, experience working with people who are different than them. And one of my first, my most favorite things about my current position is I see a lot of Black patients, and I think patients love seeing a provider that looks like them, especially since I work in obstetrics where Black women have an extreme fear of something, you know, dangerous happening in their pregnancy or not being well taken care of. And I can sense the feeling of relief in their in their demeanor when they see that I'm black and I look like them and I can understand, I can relate. And so I just really love being that person for them.